Nostradamus wouldn't have backed Borowski. He was a popular minister with a range of portfolios. Harvard In fact, he upset. won the last election with a lead of 5,000 votes. At last count tonight, he's 700 votes behind. To what do you attribute this swing away? Well, now, let's keep this in perspective, Evan. The bottom line is that the government has been returned with a strong majority of 25 seats, but there was a net swing of three percentage votes against us. We lost Mafeking by 700 votes. We cannot dismiss the strong backlash against the minister from his own supporters. Now, Michael Muldoon is a tough politician. He's not afraid to say what he feels, but he's got his enemies. Why did you do it? I felt so guilty in my life. Mark, you from the party. Todd thanked us in his speech. Yeah? <laughs> oh, what a wonderful night. So proud of us. <laughs> you okay, huh? Too much grog. Brown rice wine really goes to your head, doesn't it? I'm going to tell her. Diane, I voted for the minister. You see, he went to my school Harvey. and Diane, I Shh. This is kissing. Oh, her lips are warm and spongy. It's truth. She's trying to get me to open my mouth. Diane, I really have to tell you that I voted for. Oh, I could get to like this. Must be hard for politicians. Such a public defeat. Michael is most resilient. Oh, yeah. He'll bounce back in a week or two. Start planning the next campaign. He won't be standing in the next election. Not with the party, anyhow. Oh? The PM has been praying for something like this. I tried to warn Michael. I had no idea. Won't be easy going from the cover of Time magazine to a quiet little desk job somewhere. No, of course. I had enormous admiration for the late... Uh, former minister. Ours was just a working relationship. I barely knew the man. If ever I can be of service, Senator, any time at all. After all, I am the government medical officer. Hmm. And you enjoyed it? It's more fun kissing Anglicans than Catholics. They don't pull away after ten seconds. <clears throat> How many times this week have you manually enjoyed yourself? 22. In a week? In eight days. I can't stop thinking about her father, how she'd, how she'd look in her underwear. I mean, why would God give us urges if he didn't want us to, to pollinate? To prove how much we love him with our natural self-control. You're lucky you didn't bleed to death. Sex is a drug of desire, Harvey. Welcome to speed. As lethal as heroin. That's why the church has marriage, to sanctify God's wonderful drug in small but beautiful doses. In the meantime, just tr try to stay dry. Well, what happens if I can't? Name me one happy drug taker. Rod Stewart. Dad St. Jude, I hope you've given him a good seat with a great view of God. Amen. Minister? It's me, Harvey McHugh. I'm Mr. Muldoon now, a mere mortal like everyone else. 
Sorry about the election. 31,207. That's what I polled. 31,912 rejected me. Oh, you'll win the next one. I had such plans for this country, McHugh. It is very hard not being wanted. I voted for you. I knew in my heart that you were the best. When I was a boy, I used to sit here and stare at this picture of Lucifer. God casting him out into hell. And I wondered why Lucifer was always smiling. Why breaking the rules should give him such pleasure. Then I discovered politics. dead. I will in a sec. Frank? Where is he? Outside, airing. He's a bit on the nose. He's wet the bed. How could you? It's freezing out there. And speak of the devil, my sister Monica. I didn't hear you knock. Never do. Surprise is the soldier's friend. Somerville, Department of Veterans Affairs. You the bloke from Telecom? Certainly not. And stand up when you're spoken to. Kerry, help me get my repat pension. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> so, you've forgot a Changi lad here, eh? Oh, you mean dead. Have you ever heard of the Geneva Convention? It's how the enemy has to treat you in war. The Japs are no longer the enemy, madam. Time is the enemy. And neglect. I know Dad's outside. It's just we forgot. <laughs> Lest we forget. A Changi veteran has been dumped outdoors, unwashed, unshaved and unfed. He's had his breakfast. He was sharing his porridge with a horse, madam. Now, I was trying to feed them both at once, but then I forgot. <sighs> now then, where's your father's bedroom? His room? Well, I need to measure it. Well, I'd better go and tidy a few things up. There's no need to. Well... His sheets are a bit moist. He's had a bit of an accident. Attention! Mm. I'll go and bring poor Daddy inside. The Geneva Convention states that it must be six by eight. Any smaller, and I'll personally court-martial the both of you. I'll kill you, Frank. That's the last of the treatments, I'm afraid. You said you could keep me alive for years. Yes. Theoretically. It's such an expensive procedure. And I'm not getting funding now. You're not a wealthy man, Minister. <laughs> I mean, Michael. Oh. And perhaps you want me to die? Like your other experiments. Oh, what part of the brain controls betrayal, Dr. Voisner? If only we could lobotomize that, what a wonderful world it would be. I've been cleaning up my desk. Amazing what you find. A few old state security files. Like you and your little hospital. If I put them in the internal mail, they'd be on the coroner's desk by lunchtime. Minister, please. I expected more of you. What you said last night was true. We barely know each other. Victor. They'll probably charge me, and then I'll lose Dad. Oh, that's terrible, Mum. Hey, why don't you go and see Todd Borowski? I'm sure he could do something. Oh, love, I didn't vote for him. Well, it doesn't matter. He's there to help everyone. Fancy Borowski getting in. The minister's been around for years. Then this upstart comes along out of nowhere and gets his job. 
It's a bit on the nose, if you ask me. Mrs Shepherd said that Mrs Roberts told her that her son Davy voted three times and he's not even a Mason. Wouldn't surprise me if it's happening all over Mafeking. The telegram killed her! Not every day you get a message from the Queen. Well, since the dead can't vote, I hardly think it matters. So just go to another polling booth. Maybe they don't even ask for ID. Lillian Kershaw, deceased. Eligible to vote, seat of Mav King. Mario Corelli. Ah, see? He can't vote. What seat? Whitlam. So everyone over the age of 18 who died in the last three years in the Mafeking electorate. They're just on the roll. This doesn't mean they're voting. Well, what if they are? And that's why the minister lost. It's easy to vote in another name. Frank does it with Grandad. You don't think Todd would have? Anyone could have. Nah. To change this stuff, you need the code. Whoever's fixed this, and I'm not saying anyone did, it's pretty high up. Get you ever saw it half. Morris. Uh, and I wasn't here either, understand? I like my kneecaps how they are. You did what? I checked it on God. I gotta report you. I want you to. I can tell them what I've found. The electoral roll was fixed and the minister has been shafted. <laughs> I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that, McHugh. And this time, I'm going to let you off with a warning. You knew already, didn't you? Smed? Look. Your predecessor found some errors as well. Dead people who were listed as alive, on the roll. Now, we tried to correct them on God, but the next day, it was altered back. The dead had been resurrected. I assumed it was on the minister's orders. You didn't query it. A good public servant doesn't ask questions. The minister should have won. Yes. He was set up, uh, in his own department. Now, whoever masterminded that must have had a lot of clout. No one's higher than the minister except the... You want to spend the rest of your career in some basement fighting off rats and date-stamping mail? Because that's where we'll both be if you kick up a fuss about this. Awake, Dad? Here's your chicory. I made it a bit stronger because it's past the use-by date. Now... I'm going to clean this room from top to bottom. Can't give that bloke from Veterans Affairs any excuse to take you away. Oh, the dust. Forget about the home of compassion. You'd probably end up in the repat. What's this? Oh, your war medals and your ribbons. It's been so long, I've forgotten what's here. What's this? Oh, Dad. Dad. It's me, Harvey McHugh. Minister? Mr Muldoon? It's about the election. 
There were names on the roll that shouldn't have been there. Someone's been fooling with the computer and it's been printing out the names of dead people. That's why Todd won. Look, lots of people have been voting for their dead relatives. They're going to have to hold the election again. This time you'll win. What the solicitor say? Well, since this will's dated after the other one, this is the valid one now. Granddad. You beauty! <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to cancel that home of compassion. Oh, Frank. Just wait till Auntie Barbara hears. She'll be spewing. You left the house to me and Babe. You love us both. Oh, Dad. You're a fantastic kisser. My lips are still tingling. Mine too. Hey, listen, Diane, I have to tell you something. I didn't vote for Todd. Harve, you're joking. No, I'm not. The reason I voted for the minister is that he cares for people. When I had my accident, he looked after me and he didn't have to. Do you understand that? I'm sorry I let you and Todd down. Oh, Harve, you haven't let me down. You're not like anyone else I've ever met before. You stick by your beliefs. I like that in a man. Really? But why did you hand out leaflets for Todd? Because I wanted to be near you. What's wrong with him? We had a fight. What about? Voting the last election. Oh, he didn't vote for the minister as well. Number 17, steak's ready. <sighs> Excuse me. I suppose you're not talking to me either. Harv, how could you betray the minister for that crook? I didn't. Smed, don't look at me. What's the matter? I don't want us being seen together. They're relocating me, Harv. Look, I didn't even mention you, Smedley. They're moving everyone in the office out. They're blaming what happened on a wiring fault in God. And that's all it was, understand? They'll probably demote me. <laughs> look, I'm sorry. I'll never do the right thing again. I said don't look at me. If people think we're friendly, it could ruin my career. Poor Todd. How's he taking it? Not very well. He's gone on a meat-eating binge. A wiring fault. The PM has asked me to convey his delight. Delight, huh? You'll be spitting blood. Sorry you had to go through this, Michael. But maybe I deserved it. A stint in hell to sort me out and make me toe the line. But I'm back with a vengeance and we reinstate Plan A. A for ascension. Ah, Minister, I had to come by to extend my congratulations. Dr. Voisner, you've met Senator Robertson. Yes, of course. briefly. Uh... So everything's back to normal? Most things. I don't believe you had an appointment, Doctor. But no, Minister, I, I... Then why not speak with my secretary? In future, when you need me, she'll be happy to arrange it. Now, my campaign. But let's talk over lunch. Main table, mezzanine, floor where the journalist seat. <laughs> and let the world see who's back from the dead. Oh, yes, Mrs. Morgan. Yes. It must be a forgery. It's legitimate, and it's perfectly legal. <sighs> Nothing is legal, that's why we have lawyers. I'm coming to see you now. I can just fit you in before tennis. Mrs. Morgan, I'm on my way to court. Mr. Fembler, the judges won't mind waiting, and I'm practically on your doorstep. Oh, Mrs. Morgan, I'd be more than happy to see you, but you should make an appointment. We'll speak to my secretary, Sally, on...
plenty of potatoes, won't you, half? Bernard's had riot control practice today and the tear gas always makes him hungry. Do you think I've done the right thing about the election? Of course you have. You can't have that upstart Borowski stealing our seat. The minister's almost like one of the family. Well, I got it. You probably would have. <gasps> Frank, set another place, will you? Auntie Babe's staying for dinner. The damnation of Harvey McHugh continues tomorrow. Tonight, meet a best-selling author as he covers his last murder trial for Vanity Fair. With a look back at a celebrated career, join us for Celebrity Dominic Dunn. 8.30 tonight on ABC One.